Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm bringing you something a little bit different. Something that might just help someone out there in the future. The problem I had today while out on the water was with my tilt and trim. My motor had no problem tilting up. However, when it was time to tilt back down, nothing. The motor wouldn't tilt back down. So, first thing I'm going to do is show you what to do in an emergency situation where you're not able to either tilt your motor up or down. Alright, if you're having the problem where your motor will not tilt up and down, first thing you need to do is find the emergency hydraulic release, usually located on one of the sides of the motor. To operate this manual release, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver. Alright, as you can see, the motor is currently tilted up, and we want to slowly release this back into a down position. We're going to insert our screwdriver into the manual release and turn it slowly counterclockwise to lower the motor. And as I start to turn that screw, you'll see the motor begin to fall slowly. Turning it back clockwise will take and tighten it and stop the release of hydraulic fluid, thus stopping your motor. This same technique works if you need to raise your motor back up manually. However, if you have a larger motor, it's going to be very heavy and it's highly recommended that you get assistance from another person. Now the fun part, let's get started. After some research, I was able to narrow it down to the tilt trim relay. I was able to call around to local marinas and find one that had it in stock. Now if you have this problem, be sure to check the part numbers and verify that the part number for the relay that you're getting is the one required for your particular E-Tech outboard. And anytime we're gonna be working with electrical circuits, we wanna make sure we disconnect the battery power. In this case, I have an on-off switch that simply disconnects the battery from the circuit. Now we want to verify that we indeed have no power to the motor circuitry. Once we verify power is disconnected from the motor, we can begin taking the cover off. Once the cover is off, we'll be able to see where our tilt trim relay is located. And as we can see, the tilt trim relay is located right here on the right hand side of the motor. One of the most important things here when we're looking at this relay is to trace out and figure out where all of our wires go so we have a good idea what's connected where and how to put it back together. It's going to be hard to see in this video, but looking at our relay here, we're going to notice there's six wires. We have a blue with a white stripe, a solid blue, a green with a white stripe, a solid green, a solid red wire, and a solid black wire. Now we want to take the time to follow out each of these wires and ensure we know where they go to. We're going to start with the far black wire. If we follow it out, we can notice it goes here to a screw and that's going to be our grounding wire. Now if we follow our red wire, we notice it comes right here to this terminal stud where our main battery wire connects. Next we'll follow out our other wires. We notice that our green with white stripe and blue with white stripe comes right here to a connector and our solid blue and solid green go down here and I don't know if you'll be able to see it but there's another connector right there. We're going to need a 13 millimeter socket. We're going to use this socket to disconnect the nut from the terminal stud connecting our main battery. Now at this point, before we take anything apart, you need to make a mental note, write down, or label the wires so you know exactly how they went on that stud in which order so you can put them back the exact same way. First we're going to pull our battery wire off and I'm going to cover it back up with this red piece here this insulating rubber boot just to protect it and make sure it doesn't make contact with anything. Once we remove that main battery terminal from the stud, you'll see there's a locking washer and our three power wires here. This here one being the one that we need to disconnect. We're going to want to pull that locking tab right off of there. Now once we get that little locking tab washer off, you'll notice there's another little washer here that should come right off. All this was is to prevent that little locking tab from making contact with our other power wires. Now we'll slowly remove our wires. We'll notice that the one we were looking for right here, which goes to our relay, is actually the second one that goes onto the terminal stud. We're going to need a 10 millimeter socket to remove our bolt for the ground wire. Again, we want to take careful consideration and notice what order these went on and off. Now that the power wire and ground wire are disconnected, 
All we have left is two quick connect plugs that we have to disconnect. If we remember from when tracing out our wires, we'll find that our green with white stripe and blue with white stripe quick connect is right here that we need to disconnect. All they do is just like on a vehicle, just quick and easy just like that. Now the other one is a little tighter, but you gotta reach way down in there and get that one disconnected. Once you reach down in there and you disconnect it, that should be it for all of our wires. There's gonna be a few zip ties that might be holding things on that you have to snip. We're gonna snip these zip ties and pull our relay off just like that. And there's the old relay. Now we're gonna put the new one back in there and see if this thing will work. Here's our new relay. Now we're gonna go back with the install. We're gonna take our new relay and we're gonna press it in where the old one was. And we're gonna take a new zip tie and run it around there to hold it nice and snug, just like the old one was. Next, we're gonna to wanna to connect our ground wire. Again, it's extremely critical that you get everything back on the exact same way it came off. Next, we're gonna put back the power wires in the exact same order they came off the terminal stud. Remember that little piece goes on first. Then we had our little locking tab. Once we get our power wires back on the stud, now it's time to connect the main wire back from the battery before tightening down the nut. Once our power wires are all nice and tight, we'll slide this rubber boot back over to protect those. Now we're in the home stretch. All we gotta do is connect our two quick connect connectors and we'll be able to try this thing out and see if it works. All right, the first quick connect is this really hard one here to get to. You've really gotta again reach way down in there and kind of feel your way around to get that one connected up. All right, we got that one connected up. Now we just need to get this other small quick connect and that'll be it. All right, that was the final quick connect. All our connections are made back up. Again, I want to iterate, they're all put back the exact same way they came off. Now we're going to reconnect the battery and see if this will work. All right, we're going to turn our battery back on to the connect position. Now we should have power back to the motor. We're gonna see if this repair works and our tilt and trim operates without issue. First, we're gonna to try to go up. No issue going up. Now we're gonna to try to go down. Again, no issue. Anyone out there that has an Evinrude E-Tech and you may have a tilt or trim problem, I sure hope this video helps you learn what the problem is, how to fix it, and get you back on the water quicker.